I agree with you about this not being all about your three years and, and with Graham James, but I, I do want to talk about it for a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I, I find it interesting that you, you go and you talk about in the book and you, you talk about, you know, the Joe Sackicks and, and uh, Denny Lamberts and guys like that that appeared to not have that kind of a relationship with Graham. And then he, he obviously preyed on a guy like yourself or Sheldon who, who's, uh, who came into the situation with, as you say, maybe fewer coping tools than mm -hmm. a guy like Joe Sackick. I, I don't think that there's any, I, I don't think that that's a coincidence. I, I, I assume that, that you've thought about this and that he, he really would have targeted guys like you and Sean. Oh, Sheldon. absolutely, for sure. You know, I haven't, I haven't really kind of read up on, you know, the profile of a pedophile, but, um, you know, from what I've been told in, you know, my psychotherapy sessions and stuff is that, yeah, they, they, they look for kids like us, you yeah. know, kids that, you know, want attention and, uh, you know, basically just want somebody around. And, uh, but, you know, my behavior matches the crime, right? Abuse and behavior. You know, it's, you know, so if you, if, you know, in any walk of life, if you see some kid who's just completely out of control, just loves chaos, creates chaos, you gotta, you gotta know that somewhere in his life, some major horrific event happened to him, you know, and that, that's, you know, that's the way it was for, you know, my own experience is, you know, the abuse matches my behavior, you know, to a T, you know. And there's a really good website. It's called uh, One in Six, like number number yeah. one. Yeah. One yeah. in Six yeah. dot org. Okay. And uh, they explain it on that site to a T, the behavior, uh, what kind of people are preyed upon, you know, all that kind of stuff and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, but, you know, obviously God put me in this position for a reason, right, you know, and, um, you know, you know, the biggest part of my recovery is that, you know, is that I have, you know, I have, I have, I have faith that I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be and I've gone through the things that I've gone through because because this is my plan and this is and this is where I'm at, you know. Who knew in your opinion and and why would they have not done something about it at the time? You know what? I have no idea. I was too young to, you know. Do you think Ed Chanel knew what was going on? I have no idea, you know. Only Ed knows that, you know. Um, you know, it's hard. It's hard to say, you know. But you know what? Like I said, I, I was so focused on my dream and my goal was to be a National Hockey League player. I knew that from the time I was, you know, put the skates on for the first time. And, you know, whether, whether somebody knew or not, I have no idea. I can't, I can't, you know, you'd have to ask them, you know. I don't know. I don't know, because I was so in it, I was so trying to survive that I was only focused on how the fuck do I get out of here? You know, how do I get out of this situation? Like, why is it happening to me? Like, you know. It's a, uh, it's a scary place to be, and the only person you're thinking about is yourself and surviving on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, you know, I don't know. So I, I don't think it's up for me for me to decide. You know, I'm okay where I am today. Like I really am. That that you know. Yeah, it was horrible and it was awful and da 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 da. But you know, through 
therapy and and whatnot. You know, I'm, I'm come to a pretty good place in my life where, you know, things are okay and, you know, I have great kids, I have a great wife. You know, what more does a guy want? If you suspect that, that someone knew and didn't do anything about it, why not well, shame call on, them on the carpet? Shame on them, you know? Yeah. They have to live with that. They have to sleep at night, you know? Um, but that's the nature of this beast, is that it get, keeps getting swept under the rug, keeps getting swept under the rug. Mm -hmm. And there's only so, so much one person can do about this thing, right. you know? And like I told you, the media is focused on me and my abuse, and that's it. Well, you know what? Go after those guys. Get in their faces. Make them uncomfortable. Talk to them about it. You know, that's how you can do your part. You know, responsible journalism, if you really want to get to the bottom of this, go after those people. You know, get in their face. You know, do what you've done, do what the media's done to me for the last seven days. Call me constantly. Want me to make comments. Go after those people, you know, like, like you've come after me, you know. Because they're the powers that be. I was just a player trying to get to the next level. Was I wrong? Yes, I was. But did anybody, did anybody follow up on all that? No, they didn't. And that's the nature of abuse. That's why people don't speak out. Right. Is for that reason and that reason alone. But you know what? For me, I don't care. I don't care what people think about me. I really don't. You know, I know who I am. Through my own process, I know who I am. And I'm super strong and I can take just about anything you can throw at me. And there's nothing that I can't get through. And uh, that's why I wrote this book. You know? Because I know when people read this book, they're going to be really uncomfortable. Really uncomfortable. Because they're going to relate to a lot of things in the book. And, and if you're uncomfortable, that means you need to work on something or you need to figure out why is this, why is this making me uncomfortable? I, I think, I, I, you know, you, I, you talk in, in different points in the book, the, the sort of the hold that, that, that Graham had on you. And, I, and, I th and the one thing that I think capsulizes that more than anything was when you were talking about investing in the hitman. Here was a situation years after the abuse you had suffered, the same guy who was abusing asked you to invest in a junior hockey team where you knew that there was a possibility that he could be doing the same thing to kids, yet you still, you still aided and abetted it in a way. Absolutely, for sure. Did, that must have gone through your mind at the time, thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm helping this guy prey on people, or did it? Uh, I wouldn't put it that way. I would, I would put it in a way as, you know what, even at that point in my life, I was in no shape or form to be making any kind of decision. Um, do I feel badly now? Yeah, of course I do, you know? Um, but you got to understand the guilt and the shame and the, and the, uh, and I knew he would not stop calling me until, you know, until that happened. And, uh, it, uh, you know, thank God it was, you know, you know, Chuck and, and Lauren did their job and, and figured it out and got him out of there because, uh, you know, um, I think that it might have played out differently if he was around for a while. 